and welcome to Navigating Change, the podcast from Teibel Education. I'm Pete Wright. This past week, Howard Teibel spoke with two CIOs from University of Colorado, Larry Levine, who leads the Boulder IT organization, and Scott Munson, who runs the System IT Group. Their conversation focused on how the two are cultivating a culture of increased collaboration, trust, and a willingness to explore innovating on shared projects. Howard starts by asking Scott and Larry to talk about how their teams reacted to hearing that they would be coming together to explore doing a workshop on working more closely together. Say a little bit about actually what it was like when you went back to your teams and said we were going to do this. What was the reaction of your team, Scott, when you introduced this idea? Well, I think we have a, a history of telling stories to ourselves um, for folks that we email, but we never come face to face with. And so I remember when I brought it forward to my team, there, there was excitement and some hesitation at first um, because some of these stories have been around for 10 or 15 years in folks' heads around uh, potentially how a campus may respond to coming together. Um, and I was very thankful that when we actually brought people together, uh, just like Larry was saying, we, we had, we had a, a number of people who have been working together for many years, um, never bothered to pick up a phone or meet uh, face-to-face. And all of a sudden, it was this aha moment around, wait a minute, you, uh, we have smart people on both teams. We have good people on both teams. Um, what would it be like if we actually talked more? Face to face and, and understood each other. I still remember uh, the December night when when Larry gave me a call and said, "Hey, what about this?" Uh, I said that I, I was feeling. So I've been in the the job at that point for about a year, year and a half. Um, I could feel that we were missing something, um, and so to me, this was a great opportunity to try to break break down some barriers um, that that I had seen in my time, um, and really try to, to to bring these folks together for um, uh, to engage, but also have some fun in a social atmosphere. What came out of that exploration and inviting people to do proposals together? We had some people who dreamed up adding natural language interpreters to uh, the student portal we're developing at Boulder. Um, we had some people figure out how Scott's group could help my campus, uh, how Scott's group could take over some of our Oracle DBA work because uh, Scott's uh, group does a lot of Oracle DBA work, and we do very little. And so it's it's really nice to have some people pick that up as well. You know, the anecdote I tell is when we brought together a cross-functional team of facilities folks, IT folks, HR folks, in a small group conversation, they were discussing roof safety and how to inspect roofs while they were fundamentally thinking about how to do it better it was still climbing ladders and somebody in the group happened to have purchased a drone and they threw out this idea, what about using drones for inspection as a proposal to submit? And that opened up a different way of thinking about the work. And that what that tells me, Larry and Scott, and I love your perspective of this, is one of the challenges is we're so close to the work unless we bring in people who might see it from a customer perspective or from a completely different perspective, we're basically going to incrementally try and do it a little bit better. But we won't come up with those innovative ideas if we don't have a different lens. And in this case, someone brought a different lens. Do you see that as a challenge within IT groups is they often solve a problem with the mindset of what they already know and have in place? Yeah, definitely. Um, everybody's in their silos, whether they're silos on the same farms or silos across a wide array of farms. So within IT, uh, that's one of the challenges within any any group, not just an IT group, is to get people to uh, join together and work across functions when they're doing projects. And then you want to do that across organizations. Just real quick, the the drone idea um, not only was it a great idea, it might seem really obvious, but it wasn't at the time, but it drives other uh, positive outcomes as well. So the campus was just beginning to look at, hey, we got all these students flying drones around. What if they fly one into somebody's head or something? And academics wanted to fly drones in the stadium as aerospace uh, demonstrations and experiments and so on. And once administrative units got into it, it made it a lot easier to develop a needed uh, drone policy for the campus as well, one that enabled a lot of people to do what they want to do without flying drones through windows. It seems to me the missing piece here is is, is the importance of leadership like the two of you to say, 
it is not acceptable that we are operating in a way that we don't work together more effectively to produce an outcome for the campus. And you guys basically said, we are going to shift that. And, and if you didn't make that declaration, it never would have happened. So, yeah, we did make that declaration. Um, and as I'm, I'm listening to us, um, it strikes me that we, we did more than make a declaration. I agree. That's really important that Scott and I uh, saw this, that I had, uh, experienced uh, the workshop with you, Howard, uh, which helped inspire me to think I should be doing this with Scott. But there's more to it than that, though. After we made the declaration, we didn't do what so often happens, which is we stood up in front of our groups, maybe not even bringing the groups together and said, hey, this isn't acceptable. We need to work together. <laughs> so we put a whole <laughs> structure around this with you. We read a book. We talked about what's in the book. We had ex so we had a lot of things planned in order to get the group into it. Otherwise, we're just saying, "Hey, yeah, here's." But you, so let me say a question for both of you. You know your peers. You know your peers in the public and the private IT world. Why are people not doing this? Why are they not taking this initiative? I would say it takes effort. It, it's it's hard to so so as a human being at the at the core, we're built to connect, but I do think it takes effort to make that connection, but it takes even more effort to trust uh, another individual. So, so if you take uh, where Larry and I were coming from, um, I, the, the, the comments that we heard, um, to be able to be in a position now where I can challenge Larry and vice versa. I mean, I used to be the ivory tower, right? System office telling the campuses what to do. Larry used to be, well, the flagship university telling me what to do. And, and, and we've created an environment, uh, not just us, but our, but our departments, where we can challenge each other to make CU better for our student and, and, and to further the mission. Yeah, this opened a door because if you, you know, Scott serves uh, the faculty, students and staff of the campuses. And so he serves the faculty, students and staff of the Boulder campus. And those are my customers as well. And for us to go as long as our groups had gone serving the exact same customers, but not coordinating how we're doing that, you know, I'll, I'll cop to being an idiot, right? But um, <laughs> It sounds silly now. But, but this gave us more than just that insight. We also uh, put some structure around it and the ability to continue uh, the doors that we open. I agree with Scott, uh, getting to know each other and developing some trust. Everybody's self-disclosing a little bit, clowning around in front of each other a little bit. Scott and I going first, uh, embarrassing ourselves in front of our teams <laughs> was a good good thing. I'm interested in that and how your day jobs have changed. Yeah, I mean, basically, they don't they, they sit around now. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> you got nothing going on, guys. Right? Yeah. you've given it all away. I mean, they're smiling. I mean, I've never seen a happier group of IT leaders. Yeah, I'm at home playing with my dogs. You know, I hardly ever go to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it it opened i don't know a, a friendliness or a casualness i mean like scott how many times a day it was one of us text the other and say too hey, much. you got five minutes <laughs> and we just <laughs> too much <laughs> yeah so there's a message to you larry yeah stop okay. calling me no yeah Come on, no, but, but I love the casual. Your, your point is, is that you have a relationship you didn't have before. Yeah. And Howard, I, I would say I, I remember making the comment at the, at the end of uh, the workshop that you did a great job leading to to both teams that my, my fear going into that uh, was a day and a half workshop was it was going to be like an eighth grade dance. I thought everybody's going to be leaning up against the wall, kind of awkward. Nobody wants to take that first step towards each other. And, and and right away, the first five minutes, everybody started leaning in. And that, you know, the, the over the day and a half, I think that for me, that was um, so encouraging to see um, that, that Larry and I have staff that are willing to take that step forward. And here we are a year and a half later. And, and even last week, there was a call between my team and Larry's team. They're solving problems today that I, I can guarantee you two years ago, I, I don't think we would have made those calls. Well, it sounds like uh, there's both pent up kind of emotional and kind of cultural demand for exactly this kind of relationship. I wonder, Scott, how this is how this has changed your relationship with the uh, with the other two campuses uh, of the within the system. Um, well, I think it's uh, what we're trying to do is actually the CIOs now. So there, there's there's five of us. Um, 
man, two years ago, Larry, I, I don't think we talked maybe once a month, every other month. Um, now we talk every Monday. We have a standing call. Um, we, we spend a lot more time discussing the needs of the university, campus specific and broader CU wide. Um, and so I, I, I think that we just kind of open up the lines of communication and we're trying to recognize that each of us are coming from a, um, a position of trying to do what's best for our student faculty and staff, uh, not what's best for our own IT egos. Yeah. And what's what I, what I also observed about your team, Scott, is that, you know, system IT groups are, are constantly under the pressure and, and, they, and the recognition is often when things don't go well versus right. Right. when things go – when things go well, no one notices. As a matter of fact, so, you know, that, that has been – that's the nature of the work. And what I took away from watching your teams is a sense that, man, we can focus on what we do right. And it, it allowed them to have a different kind of mood about their work and put it out in a way different from it's just about putting out fires. I heard people come up to me afterwards and say, you know, I'm so appreciative of this because I've been wanting to do these kinds of projects, but I have not been able to get out from underneath all of the little requests and important requests, but all the requests – just to keep the trains running or put out a fire. And this is a way for us to do the things that we really care about. That's what I heard you say, too, that your team was excited about. Yeah, within like groups, too, you know, it um, people from one IT group and another <clears throat> often can find a lot of things to relate to each other about, more so than uh, uh, the nature of the groups they're working with on their campus or in their system. And um, I think that makes that makes it easier in the case of like a like group with a like group, and it also it disarms you and and lets you lean on a relationship you've spent the time to develop before things happen. And, and Scott, I'm sure will agree with me. Not everything goes well, and sometimes my group does something, and Scott's group is scratching their head, and vice versa, or one of the other campuses or something. Where in the past that might have festered or evoked some negative emotions. Instead, it's like, wait a minute, I'm calling so-and-so. What's up with this? And it's it's just much easier to, to resolve. We talked about uh, experimenting with uh, ideas that, that could move forward, or we talked about doing field trips, or we talked about sharing inc incomplete work. What were some of the takeaways from the learning around Pixar that you found uh, into the way you were uh, working together. Did anything I think come to the, mind? Uh, well, the sh yeah, mentioning the sharing incomplete work, that as um, e even to today, a year and a half later, that's still a challenge, I would say, but it's where we're trying to go. Be challenge because when we show incomplete work, it still opens us up. And there's that uh, level of humility that um, uh, we still have to practice on a daily basis. Um, but when we do that, boy, the um, uh, the feedback we get and, and then the better end product uh, we can have, I would say that was probably one of the biggest uh, lessons um, that I saw, at least my team walk away from. Yeah. And the, and the way that the reason that's hard, Scott, is because what it requires is that people leave their ego at the door. And that is that was part of the learning here for folks is to say, can we build a culture there's within your group, within Larry's group, but also together, where we can look at each other's work and trust enough that your assessment about something positive or negative is going to help in the end create a better product. But that can only start if we take the time to get to know each other. And that's fundamentally what the two of you produced. If you think about all the different things the Pixar book suggests, in a sense, those are sort of putting flesh on agile bones in terms of here's how you can do some of these things. I think we took a lot of those things with us, field trips, doing quick prototypes, rapid prototyping, uh, taking stuff, unfinished work to the customer <laughs> and not just say, here's what it's going to look like, but here, try this. It's, it'll blow up, <laughs> but you know, that kind of thing. So but I'd be curious if you think there's an opportunity with the other campuses for them to do that co more collaboration with you, the way you've created uh, a certain way of working with uh, Larry and Boulder. Uh, well, like I would say, I mean, uh, one campus in particular, was uh, really the doors have opened quite a bit in the last six or eight months. Um, and it really was, it's more of the, um, 
Uh, you're right. I, I was trying to think of the phrase in my mind, failure is an evil. Uh, it's kind of a necessary consequence of doing something new. Um, but but it's hard uh, from an IT. One, you mentioned checking your ego at the door. But two, for IT, because uh, when we fail, sometimes it can be fail, failure on a grand scale, especially when you're at system and supporting all <laughs> campuses. Right. Um, and, yeah. and so to kind of push those two uh, aside, um, doors have definitely been opened up. Um, and the communication's much more fluid now. It's not just Larry that I'm texting these days. Sorry, Larry. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I just think we're on a, a very positive trajectory here uh, for the university, um, uh, just because we're thinking differently. We're thinking more team uh, than we are siloed. And, and, and I've been here 10 years in this current role for about four years. And I, I just feel like um, just the, the feeling is quite different um, over the last few years. Scott and I and the, and the other IT groups are working within that context. Um, and so having a strong relationship across our groups helps a lot to function within the larger context of all that is University of Colorado. Well, kudos to the two of you for taking taking this risk. What risk? One, one, Larry, for you to bring it to Scott. Scott, your openness to it, and I think it's contributed greatly to building connections on your team, so you can look at the bigger projects together, as opposed to passing the baton or never really talking about what does it mean to serve with the larger needs and and draw on our our relative strengths. As we wrap up, I you know you only have forty five minutes at this gig. Right. Forty five minutes to tell what could be a very large story. So in an effort to orient the audience, I'd like to do a very quick round table and have each one of you distill for us, for those of us who might just be in the audience. What is the one thing that you deeply want your audience to walk away from their time, their brief 45 minutes with you? Scott, that building relationships is uh, takes time, takes effort. Um and you have to continually to do it, but it's worth it in the end. Um, that when you build trust, it doesn't mean that uh, you're going to trust that someone doesn't screw up. It means you're in trust even when they do screw up. Outstanding. Nice. Uh, Larry, why don't you uh, take number two here? Same thing, really. I was going to say, if you don't take the time to build relationships when you have time to build them, then when everything goes south or belly up, not only are you not going to build that relationship, but you're not going to have it, and it's going to make things infinitely harder to to fix and correct i'd also you know it also occurs to me before we really developed all this scott we were just sort of barely relating to each other our groups were relating i didn't appreciate what a great sense of humor you have and that makes my day easier <laughs> to be able to just jive around with you a little bit once in a while so outstanding howard so i'd say you know from my external standpoint and working with different campuses what the learning here is the willingness to, to recognize our own blindness and to say, maybe I don't know uh, what it is that my team could be doing and I'm going to be open to putting myself in a situation where I, I don't see the outcome. This is not a problem, problem solving exercise. I mean, that was what I give them so much credit. IT groups are so oriented to problem solving that this was more of an exploration and to be willing, who's ever listening to this, to us, to our talk, to be, be willing to recognize the power of, of, of getting out of a problem-solving mindset and to say, explore about ideas, how we can be more effective through relationship. And, you know, and I want to just add, the, the important part here is not Scott's and my relationship, although that certainly helped kick it off. We put our teams together in the context we've been trying to describe here. Who knows what they keep coming up with? Uh, <laughs> that's like out of our control, but it's been, it's been very yeah. positive. They do their own thing with it now. Now, I, I tried, by the way, Pete, to convince Larry <laughs> to go as Woody and Scott to go as Buzz, <laughs> but they would not. And, the, and Larry came close until I reminded him that people have cell phones and he, he dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> it's an IT conference, gentlemen. <laughs> they yeah. got oh their God. cell phones. I, I think that is, uh, that, that would have 
have been fantastic. And so much for that vaunted sense of humor. Uh, I, I guess that's all just lip service. I, I'm bringing the onesies. <laughs> the, the onesies. We, we talked about it. People can fill in with their own imaginations. It's like radio or something, you know? So. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Who knows what we're wearing right now? Uh, right. Well, thank you, uh, gents, both of you, for joining us uh, on this, uh, this podcast today. We sure appreciate your time. Everybody who's listening, please uh, head over to Educause. Uh, learn more about the annual conference. If you're in education IT, uh, you probably already know about this, but clearly there is a great story to be told around humanizing the relationships that we have uh, across our uh, campuses and systems. So thank you again. We appreciate your time and attention. Uh, on behalf of Howard Teibel and Scott Munson and Larry Levine, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next time right here on Navigating Change, the podcast from Teibel Education. Thank you.